is the Ukraine crisis reverberating in your neck of the woods in the, in the Balkans? I mean, I, was, I asked because I was struck by uh, the response the, the Russian foreign ministry had to your prime minister's visit here to Washington. I think it was some two or three weeks ago. And he called for a bold start in further Euro-Atlantic integration. And the Russian foreign ministry described that statement as hostile. What are, how is the crisis in Ukraine, how is Russian policy affecting security in your region? Well, first of all, I think uh, that uh, uh, we need to remind on, on uh, and you've done that in, in a certain way, of what just uh, uh, minutes ago uh, Secretary Kerry uh, uh, said by saying that uh, in the past 65 years, there's been no other institution, no other organization that has brought more security, uh, freedom, or uh, human rights than NATO. It was even at certain points a sort of a backstop uh, for the prosperity of the European integration process in, 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 in Europe. <clears throat> um, our, our, our view is that uh, if we want uh, NATO to play the same role in time to come, then uh, along with uh, you know, sticking to uh, defense budgets criteria or uh, uh, promoting energy cooperation, uh, uh, free trade and so on, there has to be a clear commitment to the open door policy in our region. Uh, because certainly uh, Europe cannot be, uh, in our view, uh, whole free and, and at peace unless countries from the Western Balkans who want to become part of the NATO really become part of the NATO. And we realize, and it's fair uh, to say that it's, it is a two-way street. Uh, it's not only that member states would sit one day and say, well, you know, because of this or that crisis, uh, let's just enlarge. All the countries need to be judged by their own merits. And even if, it, if, it, uh, even if uh, there was no Ukraine crisis, we would still be arguing that uh, a very clearly set strategic priorities, referring to Montenegro, of uh, eventually becoming part of the EU and part of the NATO are in the best national interest of Montenegro. It is in the best national interest of the region. And it should be the best interest of the NATO also, given that, given, uh, given that strategic considerations also suggest that, you know, in order to make northern Mediterranean uh, 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 NATO collective uh, uh, the, the security system whole, and, and fully functioning, Montenegro should be also inside. And it can, al and can also serve as an excellent encouragement to all other aspiring countries who may think about uh, you know, working the best efforts to try to uh, also join the alliance. And it is a two-way street because uh, we are aware that, uh, there is, uh, that there's been a lot of things that we uh, should do. Uh, there's been key, uh, four key areas in which According to our view, we've made significant progress. Uh, there is progress in the field of the rule of law. There is progress we're making in, in uh, uh, our defense system. Our soldiers have been taking part in a number of peacekeeping missions around the world, including ISAF, in order to show how interoperable they are, uh, uh, that they have uh, reached important standards. There is also uh, uh, work in progress in order to, uh, to uh, uh, further improve our intelligence because it's an important uh, standard when your country uh, wants to become to make part uh, to be to be part of, of the alliance and plus there is also an ongoing active engagement uh, of ours in talking to our people to to explain why there is so many assets of being part of the collective security system all of that together uh, put together uh, uh, should at some point suggest that uh, Montenegro is ready we believe that we are good enough to be assessed. But it, 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 and, and objectively assessed, we believe that we could uh, continue, uh, continue the process of you know, rounding off this whole uh, system when, when, when referring to, to uh, the, the security alliance and, and the Western Balkans. But, and plus, uh, if, if you consider the invitation uh, extended to, to Montenegro, for example, the next summit, that doesn't mean that we should just then uh, sit back and relax. It will take at least two more years uh, to become a full-fledged member state because there is a process to, to follow. And in those two years, there is also enough of space uh, to do uh, many other things. So by, by doing all of that, 
I think uh, again, and, and I'm, 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 I'm coming back to, 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 the, uh, to the main point, is that uh, 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 <clears throat> there is an excellent chance uh, to further, by, by, by committing to the open door policy, uh, we, we all together further improve the, 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 uh, the security, the stability of our region, and then in a way preempt uh, any future uh, crisis, any uh, new uh, uh, different uh, threats uh, to appear because uh, our, uh, uh, our system uh, uh, all together, our joint system, would, uh, would perform in a, in, a, in a better and more solid way. Minister Lutzer, I'm going to throw the same question to you. Do, do you share that position? Where would Montenegro be? I'm granted you have a very small military, but are you willing to make that symbolic contribution or, or small operational contribution? Yeah, uh, and, and you suppose that NATO will make the decision of organizing a mission or something like that? Well, NATO has. I mean, Which there are one? there are NATO uh, contingents going into the Baltic Wait. Sea. Uh, well, there are we're beefed up uh, operations for air policing. For what reason? Because Secretary Kerry said that they want to prove the allegiance to Article 5. Mm -hmm. uh, so the point is, uh, uh, as far as I read it, but uh, I guess Cristiano mm -hmm. Dittmer are better to read that uh, because they're mem NATO member states. The point is to show that the alliance agreement is there to stay. So if anybody threatens to take away a piece of uh, NATO member state, then has to be faced with very grave consequences. So we are showing the commitment to the, uh, to the alliance. Uh, Ukraine is uh, not a member state of the NATO. Mm -hmm. And we've heard uh, every now and again that there's n nobody thinks about any sort of the military solution. Uh, so what we're, think what we're talking here about is that in order to, from the security point of view, uh, if we'd like to fully consolidate Europe south, I mean referring to Western Balkans, then our argument is that the cheapest way uh, to uh, provide NATO a major contributor to bringing uh, to, to, to uh, uh, the vision of uh, Europe whole and free, uh, uh, bringing uh, uh, secure, more security, more freedom, more political stability, more uh, values that both EU and NATO are based on, then the cheapest way is to commit to the open door policy in an effective way. Uh, let's and, according, uh, and Christian has already said, there will be a couple of uh, reports uh, referring to all the aspiring countries. We believe we have done really a lot. Uh, and it doesn't mean that the next day after the invitation will just you know, sleep, fall, fall asleep. No, we'll have to work more in order to be able to really fully uh, respond to all the, all the benchmarks until the day we're member state. But the point is not that particular milestone or that particular date. The point is that any moment after our full-fledged members membership, we are able to contribute the way we should contribute to the alliances, uh, to alliances goals. So that's how I, I interpret uh, the, the, the current current situation.